Hello, this is Rebecca, and I'm really happy today to have Leslie with me. And Leslie, please introduce yourself. Hi, Rebecca, and thank you for having me. So my name is Leslie Lee. Um, I'm currently the CEO and co-founder of U Impact. So we are a Berlin-based fintech startup with the passion to mobilize retail capital towards sustainability. Fantastic. And um, what's your connection to financial services? So, yeah, my background is in banking. I mm -hmm. started with JP Morgan in London the day Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. And then I spent over a decade in banking. So I think, um, well, I know, just, until, just until just before COVID. So mm -hmm. you could say that I've witnessed the whole cycle from 2008 to 2019. And then in between of that, I, I, I have years with JP Morgan, and I took a year out, um, did a Master of Finance in the University of Cambridge, and I came back to banking. Spent a mm -hmm. few years Barclays and Emily Zuho in the space of always in the, uh, um, the sales and trading side of the banking. Wow, that's quite some experience. So three institutions roughly and about a decade and mainly in that sales and trading side my goodness and also across different well there are different banks like american bank european bank asian bank and i acted i actually did choose that deliberately so it was mm. the intention that i could experience different culture different side of banking from a different institution's perspective. And I could go on a bit further to talk about that, my observations and how to make it a better place. And actually, maybe that would be interesting. And it's just funny, actually, it occurs to me now, we have two institutions in common uh, because I worked at, at Mizaho and also at Barclays. I didn't know that, so interesting, but yeah, what, maybe linking to that question about how to make it better how did it look and feel when you were in those institutions and what are your thoughts on sort of it evolving and how you could make it better first of all i'm definitely not here to bank bash it, this is the industry i grew up i gained a lot from that all i have it's it's from there i'm here to like me as a person i'm here to observe where it is it's always in my nature to to, to think about how to make it better. Mm -hmm. All right, to start with, right, is the, when I started with JP Morgan, the start of the credit crisis, I was actually in a credit trading department. You could imagine that that's that kind of in the middle of the crisis, in mm -hmm. the middle of a very important institutions in that big storm. And then I started learning more and more about the crisis. And then what came to my surprise at the time was actually, the whole reason why the credit, credit, credit crisis happened is actually because the financial financial services, they, they lied. There's a lot of dishonesty, a lot of like solely driven by profit going on there. So that was actually the first learning point at the start of my career. I started thinking, okay, this is a such a... It's such an industry full of elite. The pay is a lot higher than the usual industries. And why is it actually making mistakes like this? And it's not just a, a isolated scenario in the UK. It's actually everywhere. It was across the pond, across European banks, American banks, Asian banks, and everyone was doing the same thing basically capitalizing on information asymmetry. Mm. So that was the first question mark I started having while I was in the industry. And I started to dig further, thought, okay, why is this happening? Um, banking is always, to, to, the, to, the, to the understanding of a not the normal society, is actually a not very transparent, uh, a not very transparent industry is perceived to be, oh, wow, what do these guys do? All this glamorous um, offices, what is happening in there? There's no transparency. And if you look deep down inside, um, the practitioners like ourselves 
a lot of that, a key word is short-termism. Mm. We're driven by our yearly KPIs, your objectives. So then the bonus can be satisfied to the individuals, to your department, to whichever, whoever's um, stakeholders in this system. That's why I thought, okay, that's actually one of the key problems of the industry. So you asking me how it has evolved. So I would give the, um, the visualization to you is that when you're in the industry, I started with is actually linear. What do I mean by that is people's sole objective is to do very well financially in their own responsibilities, in their own department's responsibilities. So everything is profit driven. And it's not hard to understand that people would do everything they can, everything they could think of. And we're talking about the smartest people in a whole society gather together with that sole objective to earn abnormal profit. And that explains a lot. And that explains, you know, the credit crisis. That explains the mis-selling, right? That explains the tax scandal from well, the big organizations with that short-termism in mind. And of course, and I said, okay, I started with the start of the, the credit crisis, beginning of the cycle, the, the down cycle. And then I've witnessed the how it evolved from a, from a cyclical cycles point of view. And then I start realizing as the regulation comes in, you know, the, 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 the other players in the whole system, ecosystem comes in to correct this issues in the banking system is starting to to scale back and think about even the people working in this in, in the industry starting to think about hey what has gone wrong mm -hmm. what can we do to start evolving and then of course that think about i mean i mean another point is that i'm a, I'm a female and I'm, I'm a minority working in the finance industry and starting to have thoughts on diversity inclusion and then inclusion not just on a on a, an agenda point of view also on 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 like um on age on ethnic minorities that 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 those aspects so it's definitely evolving towards a good direction but is it fast enough that's another topic <laughs> i think you're right um wow let's see there's so much in there <laughs> that i want to ask about and, and reflect on it's super interesting um and I think like you, I, I sort of grew up in the banking industry. It was um, definitely the industry I wanted to work in when I was small. I was super excited when I got that first job at Barclays Capital in, in 2000 uh, after graduating. And I met some fantastic people, really, really smart people. And I learned a lot and had a lot of good experiences, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but like you, I think the financial crisis was really a big moment for me because I, it, I just really started to think, how how did this happen? And <laughs> how did all these smart people in this system that I'm in and the banks that I'm in, um, with a lot of wealth and money around and and data and clever people, how how did it get this so wrong? Or was there something more there? Um, and I think that's where I started to think about regulation and clearly. My big takeaway from that was banks can't regulate themselves. Voluntary action is not enough uh, for important topics. Um, but I also started to think a lot about the disconnection between the banking system or the, even the financial system, where there's lots of data on spreadsheets and, as you say, quite linear thinking, looking at quarters or years and discount cash flow analysis and data. Um, but looking at that, often which has the profit motive, but the disconnection with sometimes the real world, the real customers, the individuals, the houses, the companies, the SMEs. And often it felt like an inbuilt preference with regulations and risk-weighted assets and credit ratings for big multinationals where there's an existing track record as opposed to maybe emergent industries or smaller organizations in the real economy. So. Yeah, I certainly I share some of those thoughts and, and on that diversity of thought point too. It's just so, so important. Um, 
So what were some of your takeaways um, as you left the industry? You, you did, one point you talked about mm. is this, the bubble, right? Yeah. We really lived in a bubble. We're talking about what, well, not even 1% of the society. I felt, okay, there was a lot of focus on product, on data. Yes, we were driven, we were living in a world of spreadsheets, numbers. Mm. And then, right, we have all this very clever financial engineering that well, JP Morgan invented CDS and all of this very interesting innovations in the financial world. But where's the detachment of thinking of who is on the other end? What is the unintended consequences at the yeah. end? So when the credit, credit crisis happened, I'm not sure the, the people who are working on a complex deals, complex structures, actually thought about the people owning those financial instruments, the mortgages, the sub, the, mm -hmm. sub -mortgage, the, the subprime mortgages at the end of the day, at the receiving end. That is the society we actually don't get to see. We really don't get to see that. So I, I thought like the human touch that is so important in the finance industry. So this is why also I set up your impact. You're saying that, what did I take away from this experience? I mm. thought, okay, number one, like I mentioned before, short-termism. I don't like that, it's not right. It's not gonna help anyone. How can we reverse that thinking from the short-termism to a long-term thinking? Mm. If we talk about how to leverage people's money, is about converting that thought about speculation to the actual investing. Yeah. With their money. And then the second thing is put a focus on the people. And if we look at the market, if we talk about sustainability, because I'm now we're all I'm all, all about sustainability with my, my personal life, my professional life, my startup, and people around me. Again, a lot of focus on data. ESG data is everywhere. It can never be perfect. Let's face that. Product. We see all sorts of sustainable products coming out every single day as we speak, as we speak. right? Article 8, Article 9, and a reclass of that back to Article 8 from Article 9. You see, there are tons of discussions on product as well. But have we asked ourselves, those financial products, What's that for? Mm. What is the mean to the end? It's me, the mean to an end is actually for the end investors to benefit from it, isn't it? The people, finance are actually all about people. Why are we ignoring that? Shouldn't that be taking care of the actual needs and wants of that person who is the ultimate beneficiary of this whole financial services? And that's what triggers to think, all right, and all right, information overflow, that's a problem. How to communicate is a problem. But what about people's behavior? You want to use the data, use the product to change, to empower them to become more confident, to become more sustainable with their money, to become more long-term focused with their money. Mm. So you see, I mean, all this why experience in, in the in the past eleven years in the eleven years of my banking experience that came up evolved into a thinking that how we can make it better. And those are the elements. And as you can see, all right, yeah, I'm doing this. Yes, my startup's doing it. And then there are a lot of other startups doing it. But now we're talking about how we can get the people to do it. And where do we find those people? And how can we change people's mindset to actually to, to gather the power together, aggregate them for a direction that's no longer linear? Mm. Let's think in, in different dimensions from linear thinking, from an from a old-fashioned financial services term to not, not even just a piece of paper, a 2D dimension, but... We're talking about 3D. Think about what about the purpose and what about the adding value, not just in financial terms, 
what about outside of financial services and look out of that bubble and see the real economy, the real people, how they live and how we can add value there. Yeah, totally. And again, so interested in so many things that I'm, I'm curious about. And I do think with financial services, this whole question around purpose and linking to the real economy, you know, it does happen. It's not all a great big blob and it's not all the same. Uh, and thinking of some of the cooperative banks or um, local banks or regional banks, for example, in Europe, they do service smaller communities and they do have really a really poor purpose and a longer term purpose at their heart. But that's really quite different to, as you say, the more financial engineering, um, looking at those assets, how can you sort of make lots of funky vehicles and structure things in a way that they qualify here or don't qualify there and sort of get tax benefits or, or even trading. You know, it's, it's not the same necessarily as putting money into the real economy for the long term. It's, it's clearly not. And I think there's lots of different shades Um within the financial industry, hopefully things will, will start to move more with that that purpose and it's already there. Um, but I do think maybe there was a time where it sort of all lost its way a little bit and let's see see what happens in the longer term. Like certainly agree about people. And I think it's, you know, the customers, individuals, as you say, SMEs, businesses, um, yeah, it's really about hope, the duty of care and, and looking after those people um, from a banking point of view that I would think is is really important. Um, so now turning a bit to what you do now, and you touched on uh, data, looking at sustainability. I would be so curious to hear what you're doing now and, and how it's been. So, yeah, I, you impact, like, carry on from your last point, the people. But mm. if we break that down, hey, what are the majority of the people? If you look at it out there, the majority of the people, they actually don't have much money. Mm. And they don't necessarily have a high level of financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about people, we have to look at the aggregated society. Therefore, they really gave us that drive, say, let's go where is most needed. The most needed people, they are actually not what the investment bankers are taking care of, right? We're talking about retail, the retail mm -hmm. people. And how can we help them? That's that's the ultimate, like the purpose, what triggered me to start your impact. And we thought, okay, um, if we're talking about long term and the people, it's not just about money anymore, is it? It's about where can people take care about that long term? And if you break down that long term, the more you think about it, the more similar it sounds like sustainability. Because mm. your future is not just about money, is it? It's about the people and it, about social. Mm. And we live in this planet that is environment. And that three elements, what does that remind you of? Isn't that the textbook definition of sustainability? So that to me, that was a no brainer. Yes, we're going to help the, the retail people, the individuals. Yes, we're going to help them to divert their money towards sustainability. And that is from the first day of your impact, what we wanted to do. And then still what we're doing every day until now, three years on. So what we do is that, okay, we're B2B. Mm -hmm. We're leveraging our big bank experience and our network there. So then we provide a software solution to the financial institutions, but to help their end investors to start investing sustainably by using data, to, to by using behavioral science, you see, is all connecting the dot. All these elements I learned from my past decade in banking is really coming into the product design, the vision, the mission and how our product roadmap will look like for now, for the future, medium, long term. So that's what we do now. And when, when it comes to um, where we are now, um, in the past, um, so so last year, last year we raised a, a private funding round and we're also backed by the EU. And in the past 
five months, we actually managed to secure three partnerships with global consultancy firms to help us to roll out our solution to the financial institutions, either that's private bank or a retail bank or financial um, like um, fund platforms. And that is super exciting, seeing that actually we're getting the echo, getting the response from the practitioners in the ag ecosystem, seeing the need to help us, to be with us on the journey to convert this mindset and this, this industry as it is now. Yeah, well, great. And I think I definitely see that that retail piece or individuals. Um, I was looking um, for a family member, actually, they asked me to take a family members, take a quick look at some of their pension documents, not from any expert view, but just to take a look and, and sort of see if I had any thoughts. Um, and as I was reading some of this documentation that was quite standard, I did think, my goodness, there's a lot of technical terms and there's a lot of things that you really take for granted if you've been in the financial industry or had some financial training like accounting. But for individuals and for retail customers who don't have that background, which, as you say, is the vast majority of people, it's really confusing and it's very daunting as well. And I think often sometimes people can get a little bit scared because of all these technical terms and then you ask a question of, let's say an ad, a financial advisor or a fund manager and they can almost blind you with science and so i think there's there is that gap there particularly yeah with with sort of people to try and demystify it a little bit and and help make some of those uh choices and perhaps it sounds like your your interface is using data to to help retail customers make some of those choices but while it's embedded into a into a larger bank or financial company is is that right that's right that's right so with our interface we made a very bold move to bring that transparency in a gamified way mm. so being in financial services for so long and also having this financial training like prof like um, academic training in the field it's complex it's definitely not made for the majority of the society. That's why we thought, okay, instead of focusing on, okay, what is the best way to, to bridge that gap, to bring that financial literacy, financial inclusion in the world, is not by hoping that, hey, do this course, you'll learn. This is not how the society is receiving it. Why don't we make it fun? Make it, why don't we make it interesting? Why don't we gamify it to make it engaging? and use the technology, combining all this data out there, make it accessible, simplified, useful, actionable for people who is there to actually make informed decisions with their money. So that's what we do. And then it's, it's the best way to get people involved, to get them started. And then once you get started, which is the first step, which is the hardest, and then there's so much more we can do about you know how to systematically bring that uh, bring bring doing the knowledge in the most effective way not just like the linear thinking like oh let's read this brochure let's have a look at this fun fact sheet is to leverage the power of technology mm. to achieve that yeah and you use the word gamify then i was just curious what did you mean mean by that how, how does it work so we in our product there are two two components right the um so with all this complex environment when it comes to choosing sustainable funds um our front end is literally helping people to make choices by a few clicks and then graphically represent the sustainability profile of the sustainable investment products mm -hmm. and help them to really narrow down use it as a use it as a, a filter um um to, to, to look through the population of the sustainable products and using gamification as in they'll be able to play with the data, mm -hmm. not just to read it in a table form. They literally will be able to click into the fund, see what the constituents are like, and as it's graphically represented, bring to life 
on the financial aspect. So we saw we're talking about the three R's, right? The risk, the return. Now we're adding the um, parameter on responsibility, the three mm. R's. And all of that delivered in a way that they are people in a, it's a pleasant user experience for them. And I give you a, a, I give you a sneak peek on our um, roadmap. So from a product explorations point of view, um, we're thinking about you know using AR and VR help people to really immerse themselves into this financial instrument and see the connections. You see, it's almost like um, walking into the financial instrument and explore the sustainability profile for yourself. And then on the back end, the second component is data. What the data is doing that we'll be able to generate a proprietary analytics about the user, about your sustainability profile, well, your level, so your sophistication level of your investment, of you as um, your financial literacy, so that we can start profiling different types of investors. And this is where behavioral science comes in. Mm -hmm. And then we we'll use nudging, the behavioral nudges, to, to make people more become more confident, to make them um, more um, sustainable as well. And this is this is where the product is set up in a high level. Wow, it sounds so exciting. And um, particularly, yeah, you're talking about some of the uh, VR and this kind of thing. That sounds very new and different. So, well, certainly for me. Um, and when I've seen some of the... Um, previous, and uh, this was a little while ago, demo versions, um, it certainly looked great. So, yeah, wishing you all the best and perhaps turning a little bit more uh, personally now for, for the final sort of questions. I just wonder, reflecting on perhaps again your time in financial services and then what you're doing now, which is connected but, but also a bit different and building upon that. Um, what learnings did you take from financial services and how does that help you now with what you're doing um, outside in the startup? So, well, it's all connected for me. Mm -hmm. So I would say the success and this, um, this milestones we've achieved now with U Impact, which is my fintech startup, a lot of that is built upon the foundation of what I learned and what built me as who I am now from the financial services in like industry. Um, in terms of the learning, I actually summarized it in a few words about how to really leverage all this learning experience from the financial services to a new horizon, to a new dimension. Then maybe this is something that I'd, is also my aim to to encourage the people currently in financial services to think about um, four things. Number one, be curious. Always thinking that, hey, how my knowledge and how my experience can solve a problem, not just in my bank, in my current role, but a wider, a, in the society setting making things a bit better for the people around you. And most importantly, that you are passionate about, mm. right? That's a phenomenon I, I've seen in the financial services industry and hearing from people I talk to. They're not necessarily that passionate about what they do anymore. How do you find that passion back? Um, and then be useful at the same time. And number two, once you find that passion, that is the time to be courageous. Mm. And you also want to, yeah, this is time to take a leap of faith, make change, be courageous to go for it. And also very, very important to find joy in the moment. And once you found that the second step, the third step, if you decided what to do, you need to be obsessed. Be obsessed with what you've chosen to do. Um, People see obsession as a, a bad word, but I don't think so. Because you can either be obsessed in solving a problem or you're going to be average and then you achieve nothing. But that is not enough. The fourth word um, is persistent. Mm -hmm. 
So my past three and a half years as an entrepreneur, I, I have all the fun in the world, but I don't deny that this is the hardest, the hardest thing I've ever chosen to do. <laughs> but be persistent. That's why it's so important to come back to the purpose that you really want to have a purpose that won't stop you from doing what you've chosen to do when the hard, the hard things is happening. So be persistent. And you want to remember that you only fail when you stop trying. Mm. Yeah, so I that's, that's the summary I've taken from my my time, my experience from financial services. Well, here, here, I certainly certainly agree with a huge amount of that, and I think speaking personally as well, um, I was probably a bit daunted. I think when I left, it was quite a leap of faith, uh, leaving leaving a large bank and leaving the industry, and now setting up on my own. But actually, it was it's been such a learning experience and I think I would, if I'd waited for the right time it was uh, March 2020 when I left and I never would have foreseen everything that had happened since then but um, if I'd waited for the right time I don't think there would have been a time I think sometimes it's, no just, right time. it's just taking that moment and, and making a jump and you can always go back you know it's not to say never things never change and we can go back to that industry but there's a whole big wide world out there and um i think so many growth opportunities i've learned so much since setting up my own company it's just unbelievable that's right the learning curve has been unbelievable for me as well and i never regret it a day mm. after i left financial services i mean after i left banking to be precise because i'm still in financial services every mm. every day i do it's about having uh, put another hat on, having a critical thinking, and also an open mind and positive mind with with the initiative, the, the, the willingness and determination to make a change and push it forward to this industry I actually do love. Yeah, yeah, likewise. And maybe a final point, I mean, and also if there's anything else you'd like to say to wrap up, but... If you could go back and give yourself some advice, what do you think you would say if, if you were talking to yourself, I don't know, five or 10 years ago? Five to 10, ten years ago, like what I was saying. Yeah, or longer. <laughs> yeah, I wish back then I had this understanding of turning a linear life, expand that to other dimensions and think about how do I turn this linear line into a surface to start with and expand in a 3D way? So I'm talking about not just the people in the bubble. Mm. Take yourself outside of the bubble. Talk to the real world and see things always from a problem-solving point of view, not to complain. We're all so easy to get into the victim's mindset. It's about be the creator. Be the creator of change and then and also act the change be the change you want to see and that's something i want to tell myself five years ago ten years ago and also what's more important is the people in in the situation right now in financial services right now they're the smartest people very very smart people and then um they taking a leap of faith they would you will see the potential you never imagined you could have done was what you have. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I think moving from that linear to just sort of building the surface and this whole world out there. And yeah, I, I totally get that. I think, um, again, speaking a little bit personally, I was definitely quite, quite in a bubble. I both lived and worked in Canary Wharf, had a really great time there. But um, if I compare to my life now, um, I've moved and I'm very, very close to nature, spend a lot of time in nature, um, you know, have my own business. And it's it just feels a lot more full, but in, in a really different way, much more connected with the community, people around me, and also just the natural environment around me. And I think I, I've kind of missed that connection somehow. Totally agree. Love that. Love that. And do you have any... So final thoughts and before we wrap up or anything else to say 
if you have a, a thought of making a change, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> that will be the final world. I like it. Let's leave it there and just do it. Thank you, Leslie. It was great to talk to you today. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. Thank you.